the first and ten for Los Lunas at the 46. The secondary for the Bulldogs, Jaime Rodriguez has an interception this season, returned for a touchdown. He wears number 21. Sam Cruz at the other corner wears number 10. Strong safety, James Ewing, number 4. The pitch to the outside, number 24 with the carry. It's Anthony Perea. Perea with a decent gain. Up towards midfield, the safeties for Las Cruces. I mentioned James Ewing wears number 4. He's a junior. One of the few junior starters on this ball club. Gabe Hernandez wears number five. He and Johnny Franco will be uh, splitting time at the free safety position for Las Cruces High School. Gain of about five for Anthony Perea on the option. Yeah, and it, the quarterback, nice pitch. Sam Cruz made a, came up and made a nice tackle. You know, <clears throat> this is the first year they're running the option, and usually teams have difficulty with it. That time they line up in the eye and just run the lead, trying to run that, find that bubble uh, with the Bulldogs. Pere on the carry again for Los Lunas. He gets it up to the 46-yard line. It's a pickup of three, a big third down play coming third down and two at the 46 of the Bulldogs. You know, that last flag, you know, I'm going to thank Patrick Pogue for letting us use the flag of the prop at the beginning, but now I wish I'd have kept it in my pocket. You mean that was a prop? You don't carry one of those with you wherever you go? <laughs> I think I should. Reversing out, the quarterback Romero wants to throw. He's got a man wide open. It's his big tight end. And he rumbles all the way inside the 20-yard line. Dennis Knight wears number 84. He's a big guy, 6'2", almost 200-pounder. Just a junior, and he was wide open. Yeah, it was a little bit too wide open. What happens is it's a little bootleg action coming off the option, and that's the tight end that was dragging across. Now, what should happen is a linebacker should either pick him up and jam him, or, I mean, a defensive end should jam on the line of scrimmage or a linebacker pick him up. So uh, Alex Petermeyer made the touchdown-saving tackle. Gain of 28 yards on the play from the arm of Romero into the hands of Knight. First and 10. Los Lunas Tigers with the drive to open up the game. The sweep to the right side. Ball is loose. Dogs all over it. I think they've got it. Big defensive play. Boy, somebody really stuffed that thing over there. Was that uh, James, James Ewing? Ewing? Yeah. The lead Did a great blocker. job. And that was a backbreaker, a slobber knocker. He knocked the living daylights out of him. Alex Petermar coming from behind. James Ewing, super job after he delivers that devastating blow. Turns around and gets the fumble. Dogs are in business. With 9.56 to play in the first period. The Dogs with the first big break of the ball game. They forced the fumble on a great defensive play by James Ewing. First and 10, football's at the 21-yard line for Las Cruces High School. And the Dogs go to the pitch right away. Oscar Oropesa, their leading rusher, is belted at the line of scrimmage by number 58, Chris Perea. Let's set that Las Cruces starting lineup for you on the offensive side. The center is Teddy Woods, number 64, a senior. The guards, number 57, Santino Jimenez, another senior. Jerry Castro, number 52, a senior as well. The tackle is 78, Joel Angle, number 79, Rick, Big Rick Chavez. And we'll get to the backs of the receivers after this play. A gain of a couple yards for Oscar Otopesa on the second effort. Here's Otopesa again coming to the near side, picking his way forward. Falls down at about the 30-yard line. They'll spot it at the 29 for Las Cruces High School. You know, the, the dogs came out running the power first play right off the bat. And uh, Oscar, in that offense, they get a lot of leeway. They can cut back, and Oscar certainly did. Sometimes the hole is there, but that time it wasn't done the time before. But that last play, just a simple uh, counter tray and a pick up good yardage. About seven, they need about a yard for the first down. On third, sole setback, Otopesa, he takes the deep handoff. He's got the first down. He's got plenty more. Over a tackler he goes across midfield. He's into Los Lunas territory. That was well set up. Pat, they're running the exact same play, running that counter tray, and Coach Potter definitely sees something. But here's what's something unique about tonight's game. Because of the lack of information in the film exchange with Las Lunas, what Coach Potter's done is given uh, Gonzalez, Johnny, and uh, Manny Armanderas check with me. Those are audible, so when they come up to the line of scrimmage, they have that flexibility to change the play at the line. So first and 10, 49-yard line of the Los Lunas Tigers. We're in the first quarter, first possession for the Bulldogs. That's Benny Armandotis crushing tacklers. He moves all the way down to the 35-yard line. 
there's a flag, however, right at the line of scrimmage. Let's set the rest of that lineup while we've got a chance, see what this uh, flag's all about. It's uh, the tight end spots, Alex Petermeyer, 88, Nick Huffmeyer, 90, will split time there. The quarterback, Johnny Franco, he will also split time with Manny Armandadas, who you just saw carry the ball game. It looks like this penalty is going to be against Las Cruces High School. The tailback starter is Oscar Otopesa, number 22, a senior. You saw Manny Armandadas carry the ball right there. He wears number 17, also big bruising senior. Split ends, number 10, Sam Cruz. He's their game breaker, the wideout. And number four, James Ewing, will share time with him. Also, you'll see Willie Soltero, number 28, and Patrick Johnson, one of the few juniors, uh, in their wideout as well. He wears number 11. It looks like, uh, I didn't see the indication, but uh, moving back 15. Yeah, I believe it was holding. They, they were doing some good jobs downfield, but <laughs> perhaps they did a little bit too good of a job. <laughs> that was a, Johnny did a great job on that option, playing that off and pitching at the right time. Well executed play. First and 25 of the 36. This is a helicopter pass as Franco's hit as he throws it, almost picked off by Chad Williams, number 35 for the Tigers. And backside pressure made that thing whirly bird. Yeah, they're running that play action pass. And it doesn't slow down the backside pressure, just as you said, Pat. And he hits his arm right when he's throwing it. And Whirly Bird, whoop, 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 whoop. that's what it looked like. <laughs> Clock stops at 8.01 on the incomplete pass break for the Dogs. That one probably should have been picked off. So second down and 25 Dogs back into their own territory. Franco trying to set up the screen. Pass is too high for Huffmeyer. They might have had it set up, but there's another flag that comes in. And boy, were you prescient or what, Thunder and Dan? The Yellow Hankies playing a big role early in this football game. Well, it's keeping the dogs out of, out of scoring position, and it's killing their drives. You know, that screen was fairly well set up had uh, Gonzalez been able to get that down a little bit. Ah. Illegal receiver downfield, what had happened was that everybody was across the line of scrimmage and he threw the ball. Everybody was beyond the line of scrimmage with that call. You see that happen, but not that often. Now, would you take this penalty or would you take the play? I think it, at, with 25 yards to go, I'd decline and indeed they decline it. I wouldn't. The dogs are too explosive. This could be a long night for the Tigers. I did say that too, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> Third down now and 25 at the 36-yard line. Bulldogs need a big play here. Receivers to both sides. Franco play action. Fires it out there intended for Cruz. Cruz has it. He's well shy of the first down, but he gets a big chunk of it back. It's near the 48-yard line. The Dogs will have to punt it away. They still need better than 10 yards to the first down. Get it all the way to the 47, gain of 11. Well, one thing in the dogs' advantage is that wind is definitely behind their backs, and I'm sure that's why they chose to go with the wind in this opening first quarter. It might have slowed down a little bit, and the wind looks like it's growing cross field, but down there you don't know, Pat. Manny Armandadas to do the booting. That's a good high kick. Sends the uh, receiver back to the 10. He goes right through his legs into the end zone. It's a touchback. Boy. Los Lunas got a break Holy there. Holy cow, that was, uh, hum. It looked as if it went right off his, careened off his arm. Coach Potter saying the same thing. Ed Helsel says, nope, that's my first down on 20. You know, and I, unfortunately, uh, I know there's a difference in the pros between a muff and a fumble. Maybe this is one of those muff things where if it goes the end zone, it's a touchback. Clearly, that's what the call is. Well, I don't like that. Okay. And I, and I tell you, uh, Las Lunas is in trouble, even though they're on the 20. They had they put together a pretty good little drive that first time. First and 10 at the 20-yard line to give into the middle of the line. They're not finding anything there. And, you know, I didn't see the Carlsbad game, but El Paso didn't find anything in the middle either. No, An Jimmy, opening game of the season. They tried running that lead right at Jimmy Franco, and he came up and just stuck him in the gut. That was a good tackle. You know, Jim, you know, you look at him, he's not big and bruising, but he gets there. No gain for Anthony Perea for Los Lunas High School. They don't spend a lot of time in the huddle. Scoreless here in the first period, seven minutes to play. Reversing out the quarterback, Romero. Got some time, fires, nice defensive play, but a flag flies late. Yeah, I think James Ewing was coming over the top. I believe it was him. 
Look pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope maybe I did. I hope I didn't put a jinx on him, Andy. I hope oh, I didn't no jinx. kidding. <laughs> yeah, you'll never see that RV at a tailgate party then. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Las Lunas has had the best time moving the ball with them yellow hankies. Yep. And uh, you can only hope and, and realize that that's not going to get them touchdowns. You know, cross our hearts and hope to die, stick a needle in our eye. I mean, three 15 yard penalties in the first period, in the first half of the first period alone, and one that uh, Los Lunas declined. So the flags are killing the dogs early. The pitch, Perea. Manny Armadonis and plenty of other red jerseys around there. He's not going anywhere. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of two. Boy, Manny Armadonis had the first hit, but I tell you what, Gabe Hernandez came up and put the icing on the cake. He put the topping on there. So a loss of a pair for Perea, who has uh, felt the sting of some blows from the defensive lineman of the Bulldogs. He's carried five times for three yards and fumbled. You know, they shut that option down just uh, exquisite. It was just a great job. Second and 12 at the 33. Give into the middle. That's Adam Tull on the carry. His second carry of the ball game. He gets it up to the 36. It's a pickup of three. But it'll be third down and nine at the 36-yard line. Running a trap right there. And Alex Petermeyer was not to be fooled. Came up, filled the hole, and as well as uh, Gabe Hernandez coming up from the secondary. Good job. Las Cruces opened up their season with a resounding 38-7 win over El Paso High School. They followed that up with a win on the road at Carlsbad. 30-28, a game that went down to the wire. Famous for five plays being run in 13 seconds. How do you do it? I don't know. And here they go, trying to extend the unbeaten season. Romero to throw. Armandadas with some pressure. Nice defensive play at the last minute coming in. Gabe Hernandez, number five, knocks it away. It's fourth down for Las Lunas. That is everything you want. Once again, it's a little bootleg action off of the misdirection, off the option, and he sets up, and if he doesn't get rid of it, he's going to get drilled in the back. Great play by Hernandez. Outstanding. Right in the throwing lane. Super job. So Los Lunas, late man coming on here to punt it. It will be number 14, Jacob Bogus, to do the booting. Standing deep, deep for the Bulldogs, the dangerous Sam Cruz. Bogus barely gets it off as he fumbled the snap. Cruz with some room at the 35. Nice cut there. He's to midfield. I told you he was dangerous. He's going to break one or two this year. I can promise you that. He's already broken one, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's doing a great job. He did uh, the first punt. Or, no, he had a pass interception against uh, El Paso High, was it not? I don't know. It was Jaime Rodriguez. I don't know. There's been so many games, so <laughs> many stadiums. Who knows? Pat, it's hey, all a blur, isn't it? I was afraid right there. I was scared, Andy, because it looked like we were going to get called for clipping on that return. First and 10 at the 42-yard line of the Tigers for Las Cruces. Five minutes, 25 seconds to play here in the scoreless first quarter. Dog second possession. The give. It looks like Oropesa, not much there. He did get up to the 39. Pickup of three yards for Las Cruces on homecoming night. Like you said at the opening of the game, Coach Potter definitely wants to establish that inside running the game. But he's got that off tackle, his power play is lead, and he's got good misdirection with the dig, which is like an inside scissors, and uh, should present problems. Armandana sent a tailback for the dogs. Second down, seven, footballs at the 39. The pitch to Armandana is coming to the far side. He's got the legs cut out from under him. That's the way you're going to have to tackle Manny, or else he'll run, run you right off the field. But they make a nice play out there, and no game. You know, that had to be a little miscommunication because he's running the, the power to the, to the wide side of the field, and there's nobody out there blocking for him, and there's, the defensive end's unaccounted for, and he made an easy tackle. So third down here and seven yards for the Dogs. Passing situation. We'll see if Franco puts in the air. Tigers come with a blitz. Franco off play action and lots of pressure. Flag flies just after the snap. The pass intended for, I believe, Huffmeyer out there. And I think he caught it, but he lost yardage on the catch. Yeah, he did. And usually that, that's a holding. And yeah, Las Lunas is definitely clapping. 
Right here you could decline a penalty. Mm -hmm. But you're going to be in bad field position, right. I think, no matter what. So the hold is declined. It's a loss of two yards on the reception. Fourth down and nine at the 41. So that uh, just bad things all around there. Yeah, Dogs and Coach Potter is definitely not happy with some of the things that are happening right now. They're out of sync offensively, and it's just miscommunication. You can tell one or two things is, is, is happening. And of course, those penalties are certainly taking the wind out of them. Armandada aims for the corner. Bogus can't handle it again. This time, I believe the dogs have it. Now that was there. Planned. We go. That was planned, Pat. That was an offensive play that they have been working on <laughs> for a long time. You know, and I don't think there's any question that he touched it that time. Is it bounced off his chest? Great punt from Armandada. has got him going towards his left, and Bogus just couldn't hang on. Much better coverage, and, and I bet you'll see when they're forced to punt again that there's going to be more dogs going after the punter because they, they've been known. One thing they know is they may have a bad deep snap. So first and ten, the Bulldogs. Beneficiary of two turnovers here in the first quarter. Armandad is the quarterback, keeps it, dives to the four-yard line. It's a pickup of seven. It'll be second and three. You know, you know what? You know what the dogs are reminding me of? Tell me, please. Last year's Pittsburgh Steelers. Who would run them all the way down the field when they got inside the into the green zone or the red zone that put Cordell Stewart in there? Oh yes. See, I mean, man, he's, I mean, he gets that number every time they get inside the ten, I believe. At least the last two times we've seen. Him. That's Armandonis at the quarterback spot right here. Oda face it behind him, standing at the 11-yard line. Second down and three. They can get a first down if they get it inside the one. Oropesa, the ball is loose, still loose. Looks like the Tigers have it, and Oropesa and Armandadas just ran into each other. Miscommunication there. The Dogs have turned it over. Well, that's that's a problem <laughs> we're talking about. Manny, I think he reversed out, and there was just, you know, there was no mesh. And uh, bad things happen when, when you're not on. But once again, hey, Los Lunas, their backs are in the wall, against the wall. A turnover here, which could happen, is going to put the dogs in good position. Well, three turnovers in the first quarter alone. First and ten, six-yard line for the Tigers. The give to number 24, Anthony Perea. Perea, a couple of yards across the line of scrimmage before he's belted by somebody down there. He got it up to the eight. It'll be second down and eight at the eight. Gabe Hernandez doing a good job coming from that secondary. He's been in on several tackles and, and assisting himself. But you don't want to see that. You want to see those uh, front seven guys in this defense making the tackles. You can't rely on your DBs. 2.40 to play. First period. Scoreless. Second down and seven. Whistles. And this one's going to go backwards as the Tigers moving before the snap of the ball, I'm guessing. How many flags have we seen so far, Pat? Hundreds. Well, Hundreds. Could we beat the 2,000-yard mark <laughs> penalties? <laughs> Could very well. <laughs> Penalty against the Tigers will move them halfway the distance of the goal line. So move it back to the four-and-a-half-yard line. A four-and-a-half-yard penalty will round it off, call it five. So four penalties have been accepted, two unaccepted. So three turnovers, six penalties, and a sloppy first quarter of play for the Bulldog homecoming. The give straight ahead again. It's Perea, and again Perea goes forward a little bit, and then backwards. Tim Davis in there amongst the Bulldog tacklers. Alex Petermar made that first contact, stood him straight up, did a great job. And they give him forward progress to the seven-yard line. You know, as a coach, you always hate homecoming games because number one, you're thinking, hey, what are you guys thinking about? Your corsages, the dance? Did you get, you know? What are you, is your suit going to match with the girls wearing and all that stuff that football coaches just don't like? Sorry, moms and dads. <laughs> but they got to settle down and play football that they're capable of. Option of the near serve, the far side, I should say, and he's not going very far at all. Romero tries to scramble out of a tackle. Huffmeyer draped around his back amongst the uh, tacklers for Las Cruces. Held him to no gain. It'll be fourth down now for Las Lunas. They'll have to punt it away. It's been an adventure when they've tried that. If I was Coach Munson, I'd on my hands and knees right now, and you got to wonder, 
Are the dogs going to look for a return? Are they going to send some people after looking for a bad snap? Jacob Boggess in his own end zone this time. Nice snap there, and he gets it off. Line drive kick, however, and it's short. Cruz drops it and drops to a knee as well as he picks it up. Uh, good field position for the dogs at the 38-yard line. And Cruz really wanted to return that one. Yeah, he did. And he would have had a heck of a return. Man, well, let's see if the, the dog offense can gel a little bit right now. The dogs just one first down on the evening thus far. Uh, the big run from Oscar Otopesa. First and 10, football at the 38 yard line. Clock stopped at 107 here in the first quarter. And Franco wants to throw a short drop, looks to the left side. He's got a man out there. Is that Soltero? Soltero with the catch, breaks a tackle, gets all the way to the 20 yard line. Nice job there. That was a great job. Reading the, the secondary, it dropped off deep. And Soltero, I mean, he's right up there. It's a nice, uh, it's not even an out, it's just a stop pattern. Catch it, did a great job after he caught the ball running with it. You know, most receivers are just happy to catch the ball and then they fall down. That never happened to you, did it, Pat? No, I, of course, will not most receivers. Oh, that's true. First and 10, 20 yard line. The pitch to the far side. Otopesa cuts inside of a block there. He's belted as he crosses the line of scrimmage and stopped at the 18 yard line of the Los Lunas Tigers. 35 seconds to play and a scoreless first period. Oh, what Coach Potter's trying to do, running that power into the boundary, is trying to outnumber him. And Oscar's just trying to pick his way, looking for that opening, because that's the way the play's designed. And we have a equipment malfunction, apparently, for Las Cruces High School. The Bulldogs trying to go 3-0. and on the season and the schedule schedule gets a little more difficult from here on out they go to Parkland although Parkland got blown out last week then they go to El Dorado that'll be tough the give Otopesa some early penetration doesn't stop him he's still moving now flags fly this one will probably come back Otopesa gets all the way to the one but yellow hankies dotting the green turf <laughs> Nick Huffmeyer, is, he's saying, you mean me? And that was a great tackle by Nick. I mean, I got to say it. He just flat tackled that kid. Another hold against the dogs. And that, oh, I tell you what, films tomorrow is not going to be fun, Nick. That was pretty blatant. The guy was sliding off, but Oscar had enough that he would have just continued on his way, and that would have been a big gainer for him. So second down and 16 from the 26. Dogs penalized now 55 yards already in the first quarter. Five seconds to play. Scoreboard reads 88 to 88. <laughs> and the clock's going to go to zero, so they're going to let him play anyway. Why not? <laughs> the throw for Cruz over his head. Incomplete. That's going to wrap up the first quarter of play. It was sloppy to say the least. We are scoreless on the Baker Pete scoreboard on the high school game of the week. Second quarter, hedge away right after this timeout. In a recent newspaper poll, Burger Town was voted.